this. I Are you recording now, Kyle? Okay, never mind. Go on. Okay, Go on. so we're recording. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is a monthly production called our what? Uh, teaching and learning, learning technologies, learning technologies. Okay. Learning technologies group. Learning technologies group. Thank you. And we make these really informal sessions. And so we do want to hear from you. We do want to know why you're here. Uh, especially this is a particularly small group. Um, and, um, and therefore we'll make it very conversational. But today's topic is web conferencing and in particular some web conferencing tools that we have available right now. But we want to make sure that faculty and staff know about their availability so that they could take advantage of them. I'm John Farquhar and I manage the Centers for Teaching, Learning and Technology. Um, and uh, help participate in these in these conversations. And I'm Justina Brown, Center for Instructional Innovation. And if you don't mind, let's hear from y'all. Craig Hoffmacher from Woodring Tech Services. Um, we use conferencing mainly during meetings. Um, well, our instructors use some conferencing, but mainly as a college, we use them during meetings to connect with people at our outreach sites. Um, We've been using Collaborate pretty successfully for a couple of years. And so we've tried um, Link a little bit with mixed results. And so I thought I would learn a bit more about the glue buttons. Great. Other stuff. Great. Welcome. Hi. Uh, I'm Sandy Brown from Career Services. And basically, I'm here uh, because we need to ramp up our connection with employers and students and all the different ways that they can maybe uh, um, talk to employers who aren't able to come to campus, getting new ways uh, to use maybe this, I'm not sure, but um, just we need to, to really start getting connected with the employers and our students when they're not on campus. Great. So, does that make sense? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Have you been using any tools right now, Skype or? Uh, Skype is about the only thing that that we've been using. I think we really need to use the, it a lot more and things like this. Um, so, because all all our employers aren't able to come. Yeah, great. A lot of them are maybe different states, and that'll give an op opportunity to bring in uh, employers from East Coast. You know, just so students can talk to them. Okay, so, yeah. so I, have, I have planned this as being a little bit of a demo um, to show you both tools that we have available, uh, but please interrupt me at any time and tell me, hey, this isn't appropriate, you know, show me something different. Uh, we really, you know, it's a small group, we really want to be able to uh, make sure that what we're doing is, is relevant. Um, backing up three years ago, the uh, community and technical colleges here in the state of Washington decided that they needed to have a web conferencing tool for distance education. And so they entered into a statewide contract, which was what was then called Illuminate, which is one of the top tools back then for doing desktop uh, video conferencing. And we were given the opportunity then to buy into that contract and also get that tool here at Western, which we did. And we had to buy into it for a three-year period. And during that three years, the, the tool Illuminate was then purchased by Blackboard and rebranded Blackboard Collaborate. And it was fairly well integrated in with our Blackboard environment. So things have changed over the three years. Not only does Blackboard run this new system, but we have then migrated away from Blackboard uh, into the, the, the Canvas learning management system. Uh, and our three-year contract then with Blackboard Collaborate is coming up this June. And since we have some alternatives now to Collaborate, I'm thinking it's not likely that we're going to renew that contract. And so I'm getting the word out now, letting people know that, um, uh, that we're looking at these alternatives, and I really want to have people starting to use these alternatives and tell us if there's any concerns, uh, you know, should we, should we make that decision to, to, turn, off, to turn off Collaborate. The, the tool that behaves most consistently to collaborate is this tool Big Blue Button that we got for free when we started our license with Canvas. And it's nicely integrated in with Canvas. It looks, it behaves very similar to Blackboard Collaborate. 
So for many of the folks that have already been using Blackboard Collaborate, it may seem reasonable simply to switch over to BigBlueButton. However, the tool is principally one that's integrated in with Canvas and that we anticipate its use will be largely for online classes. You certainly can use it for other purposes, but because of its integration in with Canvas, should you want to use it for other purposes like staff meetings, faculty meetings, reaching out to third parties across uh, outside campus, you, uh, you have to do that from within a Canvas course. Uh, for your faculty and staff, especially your faculty, this actually might end up being a preferred method if they are also using this tool in instructional purposes. I can see where they might say, yes, I'm familiar with this tool, using it with my students, let's go ahead and use it uh, with faculty-faculty groups. For staff who wouldn't use it any other way, um, this might be new to them. For your purposes, Sandy, um, another Another concern might be how do I grant access to this to third party people? And as far as I know, um, one has to, well, let's see, we should probably test this out, Justina, because I'm not sure if you could make a Canvas course public, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would any anonymous okay. person be able to go to that public site and then be able to go to the conferences? Link? No, what happens, I don't know that I've tested that. I doubt it. Um, what happens with the public site when a non-logged-in person hits that URL, they can only see the, the navigational items that don't require... Don't require some additional some authentication. Some authentication. So yeah. if you have discussion boards enabled um, in a public site, only if you're logged into Canvas through Western Canvas. Can they be a can guest? They even, can they even see it? So what we would have to do is, is we, have, yeah. we can create guest accounts for these individuals. But that does mean some additional setup time. Uh, we would email out to these people what their username and password is, and it would grant them access to that particular Canvas site and all the other Canvas tools that you make available, and then they could get access to, um, to, to the site. So um, there may, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about and maybe even show the, the alternative. Okay. For you because so this may not be the this may not be a perfect the big blue button may not be the best tool yeah for you okay. yeah yeah uh, it seems like for our purposes we need to we need to enroll our faculty and staff as yes. Canvas students in this in mm -hmm. our yes that's course. what you want to do yeah. you want to set up a Canvas course mm -hmm. for whatever group you have mm -hmm. and you could use it for other purposes you know documenting yeah. the conversations having online discussions but you would, you would be directing your faculty and staff to go to that site to be able to launch the, uh, the conference. Okay? And then Canvas does allow you to record. It'll save it for a couple of weeks. I yes, think, yes. Like so uh, would, would you like to see, have you, have you looked at it? Would you like to see it? You'll, you'll, I haven't looked at it as much as I have with LinkedIn. Okay, so. okay, great. Well, let's take, let's take a brief look at this then, because I know actually that I have um, I have Peter Agras back in the office over in Miller Hall, probably waiting for us here. So, uh, you know, this, this, this is the overall layout of, of Canvas is what we're looking at here, Sandy. Mm -hmm. And these are options. The ones that are grayed out are not active for the students. Um, I've only activated the ones that are in, in darker colors. And so I've created this Canvas site only for these, these conferences. I have a conference going right now, and so we can join that conference. As you see, it launches a new window. It requires Flash to run as the technology as opposed to Java, which is what Collaborate was running earlier. So I'm going to tell it to allow to use um, my camera. And uh, we often should go through testing. And here, we're testing my audio. Here, I can reduce the echo a bit. It does echo on this, but later, the echo isn't there. So I'm also going to allow my camera, and I'll just close that. Okay, and let me test the speakers. Okay, great. Can you turn down these speakers? Yes, I can. Uh, so here, uh, we've joined the conference. And uh, we have both Peter and Kevin in here. 
uh, why don't I just start off by asking each of you guys, uh, starting with Peter, just to say hi so that we can test our audio. Hello. <laughs> Great. There he is on uh, camera as well. Uh, Kevin? Hey there. Okay, and Kevin's just up. Oh, he's bringing his camera up. All right, we see you as well. Let me turn on our web camera. <coughs> not able to join because this is an iPad which does not support Flash. Uh, but there is, oh no, there is not an app for this. There's only an app for the link client. Yeah, so um, one of the limitations uh, over Collaborate, Collaborate did have uh, mobile tools so that you could join. Uh, I know through iOS, I don't know if you could join through Android. So Big Blue Button, to my knowledge, does not have those tools, uh, but, but, but Link does. Okay, so um, this interface looks pretty familiar to those people who have used Collaborate. You have a list of users that are over here, and uh, should they all come in through Canvas, it'll automatically display their names. I can see that they have their cameras turned on, and I can see that Peter turned his microphone off, and Kevin has his microphone turned on, and this little highlight there shows us that I'm actually talking, and so I know that I'm sending I'm sending audio. Uh, this window here is a presentation window. And um, oh, this is interesting. Where did my presentation tools go? Um, oh, someone else is the presenter. So Kevin took over being the presenter. Here, uh, let me see if I'm going to switch to myself. So I'm back to being the presenter. So as the presenter, uh, I can uh, show other people you know, this particular screen. I can you know, zoom in on things. That little red dot is being transmitted to the other participants. I can load PowerPoint files. I can load other images and insert them to this particular stage. I can also draw uh, on, this, on this stage area and put text up there. So that's one of the, the, the presentation areas we can communicate with. We can also use this chat area. Whoa. Oh, OK. Move the mouse. Uh, <coughs> So you can have you know, individuals who don't have their microphone turned on. They can communicate via, via the, the chat window. And you've got choices for how you want to present this. So if you're not going to use certain you know, aspects, you can hide various parts. Uh, so for example, maybe just a meeting brings, brings certain uh, certain characteristics here. Here would just be if you just have a PowerPoint presentation you want to talk about and hide the other aspects of that, you can do that. And, and, and how, do I, how do I go? Oh, here it is. You <laughs> as the presenter are, is Kevin and um, Peter. Peter seeing exactly what you're seeing or do yes. they have the same controls and they can? Now there's only one person has those controls at a oh. time. Oh. And I can grant those controls to someone else, but I'm the only person who has those controls. And so, yes, as I, for example, uh, I want to zoom in mm -hmm. here and, you know, oops, I'm in the drawing tool. I get the hand tool. If I wanted to talk about, you know, this part of the, the image up there, that's exactly what they're seeing in the stage area. They're seeing my red dot float around that particular, that particular icon. And yeah, and I could if I then went to grant control to Kevin to do a presentation, um, he can load his own slides. He can, you know, we can change this image, you know, to something like webinar, uh, or what I liked was maybe even the, the video chat, you know, and here we could have, we could have them talk to us. What do they like about it? Hmm? Can, can they talk? Yeah, let's get some input, I suppose, uh, from uh, maybe start with Kevin. Do you know how um, faculty have used these tools in the past? Well, uh, a, few, a few of the faculty that I've been talking to have been using it to do um, uh, class sessions with a combination of students in class and students who are, who are remote. Um, they'll have a class, like, say, in a big uh, 
in a, a lab and say half their students are coming in from the outside. So you have some students there, some students remotely, and what they'll do is they'll they'll project up onto the screen and they'll have the they'll have the internal students just um, the ones here in the classroom just interacting one on one with the professor and then they'll have other ones coming in like us asking questions, responding to stuff. That's one of the ways I've seen it being used. Um, they've been the people I've had I've had do that have been pretty happy with it. And Peter, have you worked with faculty on using these types of tools and whatever they're using them for? Yeah, in addition to what um, Kevin was saying, sometimes I see uh, um, instructors inviting experts who are out in the field uh, come in and to come in and talk to their class, and uh, they get in conversation online. Uh, and I've seen a number of those; they've been very good. And I also know. Yeah, only... Go ahead, Kevin. But the only thing you need to uh, remember is if you're going to invite an expert in, very easy to do. Just going to let us know so we can, uh, we can give them a guest account and then add them to the Canvas course. They have to be part of the Canvas course in order to be able to do the uh, Easy to do, easy to grant them access, but it's a set extra step. Yeah. By the way, uh, Kevin and Peter, we have uh, Greg over there on the left and uh, Sandy, who's from uh, Career Services Center. And then, uh, and then, Justina. <laughs> one question I've got, and uh, we we've run into this already with one of our instructors. Um, I think it's in educational administration where they have these courses that are real heavy on people sitting around tables discussing, but they wanted to do online because they've got a lot of remote students, and they've run into a limit of you know, how many, like with Collaborate, obviously you can only do six cameras, I believe, at once. Does Canvas, I mean, I'm assuming Canvas has similar limits and so does the link. Uh, do well, you know, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, I mean, first of all, just to kind of separate a little bit, Big Blue Button is an add-on to Canvas, so it's not so much Canvas, but it's Big Blue Button. Right. Um, yeah, like like Collaborate, I think that there's a there's an upper limit to the number of people who can have simultaneous video feeds going. Um, but in classes that I've had where they've had multiple people log in, they've had quite a few people logging in and the like using the chat functions, and not everybody using video, and that seems to have worked fairly well. And that and that's kind of what I recommended, but this particular instructor for some reason really wanted to have like 15 people on video, which I thought would really be problematic anyway, just talking and hearing and so forth. Um, but so he's using yeah. he's using a Google Meetup, I guess, or whatever it is. Google, Google Plus. Yeah. Hangouts. Yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, I've run into that same thing before. I mean, I think that there is just you know there are there are limitations to any tool, you know, oh, and. and Part of what we have to navigate is is the education part of it. When they say, "Well, I want to use this tool like this," you know, you got to make sure that the tool is appropriate to be used like that. And then sometimes it isn't. Sometimes faculty expectation of what it can do is not coming so much from a point of view of reality, but of what they wish it would do. Um, so you know, like any tool, there are times when we have to step in and say, "Okay, well, it'll do this, but it won't do that." And here's another way you might achieve that. Um. Yeah, I, I believe Big Blue Button has that same limitation with number of, of, of cameras that you can have live. Collaborate used to have this wonderful feature called breakout rooms, where you could essentially create sub rooms and people could self assign or they could even be assigned by the instructor could, could go to those rooms. I believe that you could probably support that by simply creating multiple conferences here in, in, uh, in Canvas. And then at a certain point in the class, the instructor could say, okay, exit this conference, go into one that you've been assigned to, and they would be perhaps in their own conferences sharing. And again, it'd be like little groups right. that would be sharing. Um, but uh, I've, I've seen, this doesn't happen often, but I've seen, even with Collaborate, that with six people using their camera, it was a lot of data being pushed around, and it was slowing things down. And so quite often people would turn their cameras off you know, and it would improve the speed. And so even with six cameras, you run into some uh, network limitations. Yeah. And of course, being a, being a web-based tool, it 
it's not just the tool, it's the load on the network, it's the load on their network. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play. Um, the other thing that I was going to point out, people, that, now that I think of it, that people have been using this for is to do conferences with people off-site. You know, face-to-face -face or like essentially like office hours, but for people who can't come into the office. So maybe just to continue our tour a little bit, I also have the ability to do a uh, sharing my desktop. So here, I'll go ahead and just do full screen. Uh, and this allows me, if I'm going to be showing off some software or teaching some software, I can, I can do that. And the participants on the other side will see in a small window that they can expand uh, my entire desktop. And I don't, okay, maybe it's still working on it. It, uh, or maybe, can you tell me, am I sharing already, guys? Yeah. Or okay. I'm getting a preview, I think, a preview window, I guess, of what I am sharing. Yeah, so, I see. And so if yeah, I, I see it. I minimize that window. because I'm seeing the, I was seeing the entire big blue button inside of that big blue button. So it took me a second, like, <laughs> All right, tell yeah, now I see it. Now you go to Google Earth. Yep. Okay. That looks great. Yeah, actually, the, the uh, response time is actually fairly quick. Well, we're going across Red Square, so it's not like we're going right. across the world here. <laughs> True. So they're, they're able to see this, and this too is supported within, yes. within uh, Blackboard Collaborate, but yeah. a part of Blackboard Collaborate allowed you to give control to someone on the other side, and, and you as well. They could share their desktop, and you can control their desktop, and, mm -hmm. and that doesn't exist within, within Big Blue Button. So a couple of limitations of Big Blue Button, you don't have the breakout rooms, you don't have the ability to share your desktop, and help me out, um, I think there's like one or two other limitations. The recording. The recording, as you mentioned earlier, Greg, you can record it, I am recording the session, but that recording only stays available for two weeks. And so if you wanted to have a longer archive, you're gonna have to use some other tool in addition to this to record the sessions. Right. Uh, of course, you don't have to make, uh, you don't have to do any special setting up. I mean, just set it up in your Canvas class and boom, it's there. You know, no, no nothing else. It does require Java, just like um, uh, Blackboard Collaborate did. It requires Java for that screen sharing yeah. part. That's right. That's the only part that requires it. Oh, and it's Flash Day, so you guys have a Flash player loaded. So if you're flash blocking, yeah, that gonna work. Okay, um, unless you have any questions about this, what we could do is go on to taking a look at Microsoft Link. And, I, and I'd suspect, Sandy, this may be a better tool for the link tool may be a better tool for you. Okay. And it would also allow us to uh, talk about some of the differences between that. So. Um, Peter and Kevin, I'm going to go ahead and exit here and see if you, see if you can join us over on the link side as well. Sure. Uh, and what I did here is I created a link meeting room and I was able, within, within link, was able to create a URL that uh, I just pasted somewhere. But this would be something, Sandy, that you could send this URL to anybody, and they would be able to open that up from email and be able to join the session. Oh. So this doesn't require all that additional setup of having to have an account, right. having to have a Canvas course. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this is going to be a much more accessible tool, I think, for those folks. So a little bit about Link as I'm, as I'm trying to launch this here uh, is that it's, it is part of the Microsoft Office suite. Uh, we have licenses of Microsoft Office here that you can simply go ahead and install. Oh. Um, Link, we would recommend the Link 2013 client. And I believe that if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you have all of your Office upgraded to 2013 as well. And so that I don't think it works very well if, if you have some of your tools being right. 2010 and some 2013. So if you choose to adopt a link uh, on a particular desktop, you want to just get the full upgrade. 
Um, where would I go to do that? So Software Services, uh, Susan Brown at Software Services can do that. And this interface will look quite a bit different than what we were just looking at. So it's a, it's a really different meeting space, but it does support many of those same features that we were seeing there before. So because I was logged into the workstation, it went ahead and logged me in to Link under that particular account. And I use Microsoft Link for my phone on a daily basis. Are you doing that now, Greg, too? Um, I've tried it. Yeah. yeah. So I have it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Who's laughing? <laughs> that would be Kevin. That would be Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, use it, I use it for my phone all the time now. I no longer have this type of a phone. Uh, all of my calls going out or coming in or coming through my computer are coming through Microsoft Link. And uh, I, have, I actually have a, a headset that I wear that plugs into my computer. Uh, and there's some, there's some nice advantages to doing that, which I can try to cover. In this particular case, I, uh, instead of just doing a person-to-person -person call like you would a typical telephone, I've actually created a meeting that would allow multiple people to join. It would also allow multiple people to turn on their cameras and to be able to have these other sharing features as well. Now let's see if I can start my video. It isn't, I don't know. I don't know that it's going to do that. Hmm. Okay. Um, it's something about um, it not recognizing this particular camera. It would take me a little bit of time, I think, to troubleshoot that. And I do see it does look like both Kevin and Peter have joined us, but they have muted their microphones, and so. Um, and Peter and Kevin, if you could turn on your camera, that would be nice to, to see that. But I'm going to show some of these additional features. Uh, you got to turn off the browser that the camera can't be fine. Oh, that makes sense. I'll go ahead and try to do that here. Okay. Wait a minute. I don't know. Yeah, is it gonna is it gonna close my link session though? I wonder. I hope not. Mine's, mine's still not coming up, but um, that's fine. So we, we have, again, we've got the message window. So um, you know, we have the capability of, of doing text as well as having the audio and the video. And we also have the, the presentation area. So again, I could upload a PowerPoint file and present that. I'm just going to go straight to a whiteboard. Okay, so now it's created a whiteboard for me, and I can go about drawing and sharing that particular whiteboard. So it has, it has many of those, those same tools. I think this allows me to, ah, okay, this is the participant window, just like we saw in the other tool. It tells me who is on camera, who's on audio, who's participating in chat, and, um, See, Justina has joined us now too. Oh, oh, yeah, you want to turn off your audio? Oh, it's <laughs> muted. Nice, nice, nice echo. I think I'll just stay out. Sorry. And we have the same feature to be able to uh, choose different types of layouts. Okay. I can record this session as well. And this works very differently than what we saw in Canvas, where in Canvas, using Big Blue Button, you can set it up ahead of time. Just say, I want to have this session recorded. Then whenever the session starts, it starts recording the session. 
When the session is done, it stops recording it, and right there in the Canvas site, the recording will sit for a couple weeks for everyone to access. And that file is sitting up in the cloud where all the Canvas data is. Here in Link, if I start a recording, it'll record the session. At the end, it'll ask me to save it, and it saves a file locally to my computer. So then I'd have to decide how I want to make that available to people. Do I then want to post that somewhere and share that link out with people? And this, this is a way to you know, manage my own, my own recordings. Do you know what file format they're in? Mm, no, I don't. Um, let's see if I actually have access. We would need, need them to be cross-platform or Mac users and stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I'll look uh, it up. Yeah. Meeting entry info. Um, here's some useful information is that also within Microsoft Link, it'll provide for you essentially a phone number as well. And so someone can join this session just audio only if they call in. Mm -hmm. And they would need to have this number and conference ID. I've done this once, and it actually was a rather involved phone tree <laughs> for you to go through to join the conference call, but it worked. And I was able to be able to talk voice and hear people via voice. Yeah, we tested that successfully, too. Yeah. And then here is where the meeting link address is generated that, Sandy, you'd come into this and you'd be able to share. You know, you just say copy all this information, put that in an email, and, and people would be able to, to share that. And when they come in that way, I mean, you're on the link client, but they'll be on they, they a come browser in, client, basically. Um, assuming that they don't have link installed, right. they would actually come in using a web browser and they would also be asked what their name is. They would type in their name, and they would come in through a web browser. But if they happen to have Microsoft Link installed, it'll give them the option, do you want to run the client? Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, it's, uh, the, it's at the bottom of the page. It'll ask if they want to, if they'd rather open it in the, in the client, or if they'd rather open it in the, uh, in the web page. I've got a question. Yeah, sure. Um, if we set this up and for this real-time um, question-answer session. And if we, if we posted it on our web page as something coming up at this day at this time with the link and said, anybody, you know, we, we, we send it out to students, say, you know, come and join us. Is there, <laughs> if we have 500 students, that want to join this, is there a problem oh. if we posted it like that? Yeah, so I've been, uh, the information that I've read indicate that the number of user limit is 250. Oh, okay. Uh, which is far higher actually than Big Blue Button. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how big your sessions would be, Greg, but I've, be I've been told <laughs> that if you have more than 70 people, you might find some performance problems on mm -hmm. the Big Blue Button side of this. So Microsoft Link, at least in their published materials, is telling us that they can support much larger conferences. However, um, we've, we've never facilitated something like that with our particular installation. And so I would ask you to do some baby steps first. Uh, you know, promote it just to smaller subsets right. of people before you announce you blast it globally. It out there. Yeah, because okay. I would, it wouldn't surprise me that yeah. we'd have a problem the yeah. very first time we try something like that. Right. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, but, okay. but it, it should be able to support 250 okay. people. And again, half a dozen people on camera, but the other 248 people would be able to hear. Uh, so would they lock out after 250 then? I suspect that they just wouldn't be able to join. Mm. New people, it, it'd say capacity is filled, you know, the room right. is filled, you can't, you can't come right. in. I don't, that would be my guess. I don't, I don't yeah. have any experience with that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we we've, we've tested the link and had pretty good experience uh, experiences with it. Um, the biggest issue we had though was we have a lot of Mac users and the Mac client isn't as full featured, and we had problems. Mac people had problems with the video and with the app sharing. They can do the other stuff. On the, I'm on the web. I'm on the Mac and I'm using mm -hmm. the web client. Okay, so you're not using the 2011. Yeah, that's working fine. Okay.
And I looked up the file format, it saves the recording, and it's an MP4. Okay. Um, That's yeah. And it, also because it's the Microsoft, sorry, because it's Microsoft, you can connect it easily to OneDrive from here, too, from the, from the manager. Okay. So yeah, Kevin was just saying the iOS client works, uh, and, mm -hmm. and I, I believe there's an Android client as well, and so if you wanted to try to support this type of conferencing on tablet or phone devices, you can. And as far as I know, Big Blue mm. Button would not, would not support that. Mm. And there's supposed to be a new Microsoft Mac Office client anyway this year, but I don't know when. A 2014 yeah. client, yeah. The other, the other reason to, to make sure that you're aware of this particular tool in future use is that um, I would anticipate that students, through their current release of Office 365 through their email client will also be given access to this tool. So, um, le I should say, legally, uh, our students can have it now, but they have to go through multiple authentication methods. And so I understand that our tech services unit is working on trying to streamline that. And once they have that worked out, they'll roll that out to students. And so this Microsoft link as a uh, voice tool, as a telephone tool, as a conferencing tool, I think it's going to become much more frequently used across all of our staff and all of our students. And uh, it, it's, it has integration into Skype. You can, have, you can have people connected via Skype, although right now that's an audio-only call, I believe. So I, I do think it is more of a future tool that everyone's going to be comfortable and familiar with that would be a good reason to think about using that as opposed to Big Blue Button. Hmm. So, if you, so as long as, see if I understand this, that you can use this if you don't have link in your Correct. computer. Correct. You will, you will open this up and maybe I can try that. Um, I think I can try that, guys. I'm going to go ahead and hang up and see if I can join again. But uh, this time I will uh, just join via the, the browser, the browser experience, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay? So I'll be back in a moment. Uh, and I was able to download the app for Link on my iPad. Okay. I actually need to go back into uh, mm. Canvas since that's where I had the link posted. Ah, let me tell you the link. Um, yeah, I think you can. I think you can. Because yep. it's kind of cryptic. You, you want to just look at it? No, I think it'd be faster if I do this. Okay. <laughs> Since I know right where it is. Yeah, in Canvas. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm looking at. So it's right here. And so this it comes up. It says, do you want to join the meeting using the link client? Uh, and I can say no, right? Can't I? I can just uh, cancel. Oh, I thought this is where I... Oh, over here. Uh, join using web app instead. Okay, so this is the guest experience, so I have to type in my name, and yes, I want to have the web app plug in and join the meeting, an MSI file, both Peter and John had the link full link program on their computers? Yeah. Uh, well, no, I think Kevin said he was coming from the web. Oh, okay. Web client. Sandy, another thing to remember, so we talked about copying that link and posting it to a website. I was curious as to how long that link would be active, because mm -hmm. I create that meeting room within um, with, within Microsoft Link. Do you guys think I need to double click on this to actually install it? Probably. Yeah, yeah that probably should be good. Okay. Um, that link actually expired after a couple of weeks. And I had asked people, I said, is this going to you know, remain resident? And I was told yes, but it didn't. So well, I don't know if that means that it's supposed to remain active mm -hmm. forever or if you yeah. if, if it doesn't but for right now I would say don't expect create the meeting room shortly before the event yeah okay
Okay, so um, I'm back. And we got a different layout, but it looks like we've got images up here. And it didn't really kick you out before, did it? Because hmm? you have John Farquhar and then Guess. Oh, yeah. Maybe because the link is still running the client on the left. The very left. There we go. Oh. Yeah, it did, it did start uh, the client as well. So uh, uh, we pretty much have, it looks like, you know, the same tools. Well, John, can you hear us? <laughs> I can hear you. Mike is muted, John. Oh. My mic is muted? I can't hear you. So change your presentation so you can see the Here, list. how about now? There it is. Yep, we can hear you. Much better. Okay. For some reason, it, I came in as being muted this time. Yeah, it's the default when they come in on the... Is there a phone number? I've got Skype up. I can, I can try to log into Skype to see if... Uh, Test that out. Well, my understanding is uh, you you have to have one of us has to initiate the call to the other person at first oh, to, to yeah to, to be in your caller list mm -hmm. and, and then you can join. And I'm not exactly sure who has to call who. Uh, All right, no worries. Yeah. I think that's a Skype limitation because with Skype, whoever has the Skype account has to initiate the call. Is that right? Well, if you're going to give me a number to call, I can, oh, I've got to start the call. Got it. Yeah. All right, never mind. <laughs> um, hmm. Here, I'm going to, I found my settings now to get my uh, webcam up again. Right. So you could have people using Skype, you could have people using the web browser, you could have people using the link. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm hearing? I think you have to activate the camera in the lower left. Yeah. Thank you. There it yep. is. All right, so you see me now? Yep. I want to get to the right view, the speaker view. No, gallery view, here we go. All right, it's showing, showing us down there. The guests come in a little. Yeah. And I can even be the presenter as well. <clears throat> yeah, Is there we a really, training module? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Is there a training module or you know, a little training program you can play with this? Oh, gosh, I haven't come across one. Okay. Here. There are online um, help files galore for link. Oh, okay. link. There's a video for Big Blue Button. Yeah. Um, I think I said we watched a video on Link on the Microsoft site. Oh. I think. Okay. Yeah. And we really liked the um, the app sharing of Link. I thought mm -hmm. it was pretty full featured and easy to use. So. App sharing. Uh, oh, yeah, well, PowerPoint and and, yeah. and desktop sharing. You can you can take polls. Um, yeah, we played with that too. Looks like you can share notes. You can add other attachments. You can add files here, and the other people will receive them right away through, mm, the, through the client. Great. So you can share applications, just not your desktop. You can share. You can show your desktop or show a region of the screen. You can't give control to someone. So, like Team Viewer is one of those that you can't actually give someone else control of your computer. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't give you that capability. Mm -hmm. And there's a comparison sheet, right? I have a couple things that we've developed, but there is a, a web page out here. Let's see. I think if I uh, maybe I'll search for the word blue, since I have I think I have it under comparing blue, big blue button with collaborate. So uh, this is these are some things that you might if you're going to move from collaborate over to big blue button lose. Um, and I know that um, Andrew had prepared one that compared big blue button to link, but we haven't posted that posted that yet. You know, again, it's interesting is that they have has much of the same tools, but they're just in different places. 
Um, and significantly, I think what you want to think about is what integration does that tool have? So Big Blue Button is integrated with Canvas. Right. Link is really integrated in with your office suite of tools. And some things I didn't really um, highlight here, but when, when you're here, um, well maybe, actually when I had Link open, uh, you're able to see like presence information. And so if someone was available to receive a call or if they're in a meeting, uh, those are things, you know, connected in with your calendars, connected in with email, and so that's the, the integration that the link client uh, gives you. And I, I think, again, that's one of the reasons why it'll become, I think, commonly used in the future. How far into the future do you see this? Like next year? Uh, well, I'm using it now, and so some of us are, are using link on a regular basis, and, and I'm using instant messaging um, to my colleagues through Microsoft Link. So if I see that they're in the office, instead of calling them, I'll just type a quick instant message to them and get a response. And so um, it, it is being used. Um, and I, the, the phone, using Microsoft Link as your central phone, is going to happen all across campus, but it'll be a phased approach over the next two years. Mm -hmm. Part of it is that people might have to buy new hardware. This, this analog phone that sits on your desk is not going to communicate with Microsoft Link, so you've got to, got to purchase some different hardware. For some of us, it could be as much as just a web camera and, and a headset for $100 and you're fine. But for a lot of people who really want to have that physical experience of having a hard phone that they can dial, you can get that too, but you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars for that. And that means for every person who uses a phone, it's, it's kind of expensive for the university. And so there is going to be this sort of phased rollout of the voice over IP um, uh, service. But eventually all of these analog phones will go away. But you can use all the web conferencing of Link, you know, without that. And that's what we're doing, because we haven't converted our phones yet. Wow. That's pretty... Pretty cool. I hope I'm still here. If you have a web. <laughs> From that. So what does that replace? Emailing your colleague across campus, calling. Yeah, what kind of the future of this, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe meetings. Maybe meetings. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You can't decide whether that's good or bad. Uh, and I don't know. I think pretty soon we will have Dick Tracy watches. We will be able to do that from our watch. Yeah. Um, I, I think, though, before that becomes very common, we have to have an infrastructure that is uh, more capable Wi-Fi, not just in terms of its accessibility across campus, but its speed yeah. as well, to be able to support a lot of this sort of mobile video conferencing. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think we're going in that direction. Yeah. Miller Hall being one of the newer, newly renovated, has good Wi-Fi. Compared to other areas. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm getting it fine. But. Yeah. It's pretty okay. spotty. Yeah. spotty. Hmm. Um, and cell phone coverage doesn't reach down here very well either. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I know it's cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's my cool. office is yeah. down the hall. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, I've got Thank Great. you so much. Thank, thanks, everyone. Thanks, for yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, John, uh, Peter, Kevin. <laughs>